In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And we welcome everyone to the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy during this Easter season, the third week of Easter. But also today is the anniversary of the death of St. Bernadette. St. Bernadette of Lourdes, she's now on the liturgical calendar in the United States. I think she's on the liturgical calendar in France and probably French-speaking countries throughout the world, but we're also going to honor St. Bernadette today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors, which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as, permitted, as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to this execu execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. 
Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said, said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week we're studying John chapter 6, which has to do with the bread of life, uh, homilies, or, or actually dialogue that Jesus has with the people. And you have to see where this is taken uh, context, that Jesus was in the desert. Jesus had just worked a sign of feeding 5,000 people. Actually, they say it was 5,000 men, not including women and children, with five barley loaves and two fish. I don't know about you, but I haven't experienced someone feeding a crowd of 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. Have you ever seen that? Wouldn't that be a great sign? If you saw that, if you experienced it, say if you were part of the crowd and you experienced this multiplication of loaves and multiplication of fish and you ate it, wouldn't that be a sign? But to show you the people's unbelief in Jesus, Jesus had just worked this sign and they were looking for him. And then they found him. And Jesus said, you're not looking for me because you're, you're seeking me. You're looking for me because you ate the loaves and were filled. That was yesterday's gospel. Meaning the people were seeking Jesus, not for Jesus, but because they wanted food. They wanted to be fed. Sometimes our intentions are so impure that we don't seek Jesus for who he is. We seek what we can get from Jesus. And as soon as we get what we want from Jesus, it's, see you later. I got it. See you, God. I will no longer go to church anymore. I got what I wanted. See how selfish that is? It's all about I. It's all about me. And it's not about the other person. It's very selfish in any relationship. If you're in a relationship and you're just taking from the other person, then that relationship is going to fall apart because you're not giving anything of yourself. You have to give of yourself. You have to give in order to receive. You can't just take and be selfish. 
If you take in life and be selfish, you're going to be alone because you're never giving. And that, that's what we call, you know, the sin of gluttony. It's like this with big arms and just taking everything into your mouth. But you're never giving. You're never giving of anything. And so after Jesus works this great miracle, the, the crowd says to him, now just think, he just fed 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two pieces of fish. And they say, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? Do you see the people's unbelief already? What sign can you do? He just worked a sign. He just worked a great sign. And then they said, what can you do? He just did a great sign. He took the bread, and Jesus blessed it. He gave thanksgiving, and then he gave the bread to his apostles to distribute to the people. See that Eucharistic context that's there? Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, gives thanksgiving, and then distributes it. It's a sign of the Eucharist. It's a sign of what we do at Mass, what the priest does at Mass. And they say, what can you do? What sign can you work? See, people are already beginning with unbelief. They don't believe in Jesus, even though the, Jesus just worked a great miracle for them. And then they quote the Old Testament. They say, our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. What are the people talking about there? They're talking about when the Hebrews, the Jews, were slaves in Egypt for 430 years. And then God frees the people from slavery in Egypt. And then they're in the desert. And when they're in the desert, they're supposed to go to the Holy Land, you know, Israel, the, the land of their ancestors. And it's only supposed to be a 40 days walk from Egypt to the Holy Land. It would have only taken the people about 40 days. But you know what they did in the desert? They complained. They complained. They murmured. There's nothing worse than having someone, than living with someone who just complains all the time, just complaining, just complaining about life, about the world, about politics. Complain, 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 complain. Doesn't that drive you crazy? It drives me crazy. If you live with someone and they're just complaining, you just, you just want to say, just shut up. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Give thanksgiving. Don't complain. Opposite of complaining of the sin of complaining and murmuring is thanksgiving. You give thanksgiving. You give thanksgiving for the gifts. Think about it. The people were just slaves for 430 years. God set them free from slavery for 430 years in the desert. He's going to bring them to a land filled with milk and honey. And the people are in the desert. And they're complaining that there's no food or water. They're just complaining, complaining, complaining. And so Moses intercedes for the people. And God says, I've heard they're complaining. You know, it's God, driving God crazy. I've heard they're complaining. And so he said, I will, I will give them food to eat. I will give them bread from heaven to eat. And God said, they will not only eat it because of their complaining. They will not only eat this bread for one day. They will eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They will eat it until it's coming out of their nostrils, until the food becomes loathsome to them because of their complaining. And so God says, you want food? I will give you food. And so God rains down this bread from heaven to the earth, has hoarfrost on it. When the people wake up in the morning, they find it and they say, what is it? And the word what is it in Hebrew means manna. Manna literally means what is it? 
And so then the people gathered it up, and God fed the people with this manna, with this bread from heaven that came down to the earth in the desert. Not for 40 days, for 40 years the people ate manna. 40 years. Can you imagine eating the same food every day for 40 years? Wouldn't you get sick of that food? It's like eating chicken every single day. And you just get sick of the. I'm a variety person. I like variety in my diet. But they ate manna for 40 years. So this was part of the people's history. And so that's why they said he gave them bread from heaven to eat for 40 years. So the people knew what it was like to eat bread from heaven that God gave them. And so Jesus says, amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave you, who gave the bread from heaven. So my father gives you the true bread from heaven. So is Jesus talking about this time of Exodus and the desert of the 40 years of the father giving the people true bread from heaven? Jesus is going to turn it around. And he said, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Is Jesus referring back to the manna in the desert? No, Jesus is referring now to himself. That he's the true bread that comes down from heaven. And he's the true bread which gives life to the world. That the people in the desert, they ate the bread from heaven, but they still died. They were, they were not given eternal life. It wasn't bread to give them eternal life. Jesus is the true bread which comes down from heaven in which we eat and he gives us true life. For his body and blood gives us true life. And so the people say, sir, give us this bread always. We want this bread always. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. That if you're hungry in life, and you're thirsty for, in life, you're hungering for something more than just the things of this earth. You're thirsting for something more than just the things of this earth. Jesus is the bread of life. If you come to Jesus, you will never hunger again. And if you believe in Jesus, you will never thirst again. And notice he puts faith in there. That you have to have faith to believe that he's the bread of life. To believe that he gives his life for us and we receive his body and blood and holy communion. Every time we go to Mass and go to Holy Communion, we have to ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of faith. Because it takes faith to believe that a priest, an anointed one of God, can take bread and take a cup of wine and pronounce the words of consecration, invoke the Holy Spirit, and that bread and that wine are no longer bread and wine, but now become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It takes faith. Why? Because according to our senses, nothing changes. According to our five senses, nothing changes. It still looks like bread. It still looks like wine. It still feels like bread. It still has, looks like the substance of wine. It's a liquid. It smells like bread and smells like wine. I got a nose like a dog. I can smell anyone out. You know, I can, I can smell that when I'm up on the altar. I can smell what wine it is. I'm like, oh, is that Chianti Merlot? You know, what kind of wine is that? It has all the characteristics of bread and wine. And when you come up to receive Holy Communion, you see bread. It looks like bread. If you receive it in your hand, it feels like bread, or you receive it on your tongue, it feels like bread, has all the characteristics of bread, and yet you need faith to believe 
that is the true body of Jesus Christ. That is why after the priest consecrates the host and the wine, he says the mystery of faith. That's why we have to have faith. That's why Jesus says, whoever believes in me will never thirst. If you believe in the Eucharist, you will never thirst again. But you have to ask for that gift of faith. Every time you come in to Mass, you have to ask for that gift of faith. Do you realize that when you receive Holy Communion, this I was teaching to children years ago when I was doing missions. And the children got it. It was great. The children provided me with like 100 homilies after that. Do you realize that when you eat Holy Communion, you're eating it. You're eating the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Where do you see the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? In the divine mercy image. The divine mercy image is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Now imagine if you were to take the divine mercy image and eat it. Eat it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if you were to take that image and all of a sudden you eat it? Now suppose the image, I mean, you wouldn't probably eat an actual image, but suppose the image became bread that you could eat. And you ate that image of divine mercy. And that image was with inside of you. The divine mercy image was inside of you. The body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ was within you. What would happen? You know what the children said to me? Children gave me this homily. They were looking at the divine mercy image, and they said, well, Father, if you ate that divine mercy image, you would, the rays of divine mercy would come forth from you. Children told me that. And I said, you're right. You're right. That you would radiate with the blood and the water, the mercy of Jesus toward others. You would have Jesus within you, and you would be radiant with glory like St. Stephen, where he was radiant with the glory of God because he had God within him. That's what Holy Communion does. It changes us. It makes us like the person of Jesus Christ. That is why it's the greatest gift that God could give us here on this earth is to receive Holy Communion. Receive Holy Communion with that gift of faith. Ask God for that gift of faith. It will transform you and make you more and more like Jesus Christ. If you receive Holy Communion every day, you will become more and more like Jesus Christ every day. You'll notice it slowly. It won't be overnight, but you will notice it slowly because you cannot help but be transformed if you're receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. That is why the promise on Divine Mercy Sunday is great because Jesus promises eternal life to those who receive Holy Communion in the state of grace, of course. But if you receive Holy Communion, he promises to raise you up on the last day. He promises eternal life. And that is is such a great grace that we can receive. It's a gift that we receive. We don't deserve it, but God wants to give us that gift anyway. Why? Because God loves us, and God is merciful, and he came down from heaven to earth to give us eternal life. Receive the bread of life. Believe in the bread of life, and the bread of life will give you true and everlasting life.
mindful of our need for God in all things, let us bring to him our petitions. For the Pope and bishops around the world, may God continue to bless and sanctify them in their service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders and their responsibility to care for all of creation, may God give them the wisdom to lead well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from anxiety or fear, may God grant them peace and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community and our work of discipleship, may God continue deepening our commitment to spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and for all the souls in purgatory, may God's perpetual light shine upon them and may they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us. May the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our personal intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, hear and answer the needs we place before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Mid the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. spiritual communion and thanksgiving my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
from the diary of St. Faustina, paragraph 806. I saw a certain priest who was surrounded by the splendor which flowed from her. Evidently, this soul loves the Immaculate One. We have died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just one announcement for the Saturday talk this weekend at 11 a.m. I will be giving the talk, the topic will be St. Margaret of Costello. So if you've ever heard of the saint, she's a great little saint. She's a saint for people with disabilities. So if you know anyone with any kind of disability, this is a great talk. She's a wonderful, wonderful saint. So 11 a.m. on Saturday, this Saturday, April the 20th for our Saturday talk. St. Margaret of Costello, the little saint is the title of the talk. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, be proud about the world, seek and learn of souls. Amen.
everyone. Hopefully you were able to catch our latest episode of Living Divine Mercy on EWTN last Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you missed it, that's okay. We have this episode and all the episodes before it on our website, livingdivinemercy.org, that you can view anytime. This is a great show about God's mercy with inspiring stories of people living it in their lives. God bless you and hope to see you on that website.